power of the grave Constant in the trial and the change One thing remains One thing remains Your love never fails and never gives up fails and never gives up it never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up it never runs out on me your love because on and on and on and on it goes yes it overwhelms and satisfies
Hallelujah. I am looking at this is going to be the end of our series on healing. And it's going to be entitled Get Moving. Amen. We're going to read the. <laughs> Let's. Um, I'm going to share some of the highlights that uh, some things that I heard that really stuck into my spirit. One of the first things I heard was this. Your spirit is designed to produce and your hands are designed to gather it. Your spirit is designed to produce things. Your hands are designed to gather it. When you start to understand that you are a speaking spirit and your words are creative and your words are powerful, you won't waste your words. Because part of the problem that a lot of us have too much. I'm stepping down, please. Part of the problem that we have, biggest problem that we have is that we talk too much and we spend too much time saying the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. So you're a speaking spirit Amen. created in the image and likeness of God. Proverbs 18, 21 says life and death is in the power of the tongue. And some people who talk too much don't know that. <laughs> you know, we, we, we would say this. Mama always say, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say nothing at all. Right. So sometimes it's better that we just go ahead and just close our mouths yeah. and not and not let all these things start to happen to us. Proverbs six, verse two says this. You are snared by the words of your mouth. Yeah. If we could really just get a hold of this piece. Yeah. When you when something's about to come out your mouth, that's stupid. <laughs> when your wife says something to you that you don't like. 
You don't have to get back. When your husband says something to you that you want to give him a piece of your mind, you don't have to respond. Amen. Amen. Because what happens is this. The roller coaster goes up. Tick, 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 tick. Y'all talking. Tick, 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 tick. You keep on talking. Tick, 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 tick. I'm not going to take this. Tick, 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 tick. Who's she talking to? Tick, 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 tick. I'm going to have to tell him about himself. Tick, 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 tick. The next thing you know. So while it's going up the mountain, stop it. Forgive and go on. Let it go. So, so understand this is that God wants to, to provide everything that we need. Like I said, the spirit provides the spirit, your spirit produces it. What you say produces, your hands gather. Just like, just like the spirit of God, they wanted something to eat. They started complaining, so he sent manna from the sky. They went out, they had to gather up the manna. Oh, amen? Now, when they were thirsty, when they were thirsty, Moses struck the rock and the water came out. But this is also progressive. Because at the end, he was told to just speak to the rock. Amen. So check this out. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The closer we walk with God, it gets easier. Does it take more energy to take a stick and hit it? Or does it take, energy, or, or does it take more energy just to speak to it? This is our choice. Amen. Amen. See, in other words, God is just telling you, get your flesh out the way. Amen. Get your flesh out the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now we also understand again, Jesus took Jesus took the fish in the loaves and offered up to God. After they after it was multiplied and served, what did they do with their hands? They gathered up. They gathered up what was left over. Amen. Now, because faith is progressive. Faith is progressive. You should not be in the same place you are by the end of this year, next year. You should start to see some changes in your line. Amen. Amen. See, now, I got news for you. It's time for what you're believing God for to manifest. Amen. I said it's time for what you're believing God for to manifest. Amen. You can't keep on waiting. How much longer are we going to keep on kicking the can down the street? Now, I know if y'all, I, I grew up in, I, I grew up in Columbus. They always, every time you see the can, you start kicking it down. Amen? But, the, but your life, you're not kicking a can. It's time for thing, these things to start to manifest that God has for you. Amen? Now, but when it came time for them to get into the promised land, guess what quit falling out the sky? The manna. Why? Because you need to start eating something different to get to the next level. See, this is the problem. And this is the problem all over the body of Christ that people get so hooked into. Well, this is where mama went. This is where baby mama went. This is where baby daddy, Uncle Ray Ray, Lucretia, and all them went to the same church. And they're not going nowhere in life because they've been eating the same food. Amen. Amen. Now, in order for you to get into another level, you need to start to eat something different. Right. And so what happens is your flesh will keep on telling you, I don't want to eat this. Even though it's good for you. Yes. Some of y'all probably been in here for the first time, never seen somebody lay hands on somebody and things like that. And people fall down the spirit. You might be looking like this. Is it walking neck pinch? If it, is it what? What are they doing? Whoa, whoa. What's happening? Amen? Amen. But then when you read the Bible, you hear things like donkeys talking, talking. Amen. Paul getting knocked off the horse, I mean off the donkey on the road to Damascus. And the spirit, and Jesus talking to him. And he's talk, they're having a conversation. And the guys next to him are like, The Bible is full, is full of things that don't make any sense to you. Yeah. But see, this gets you back into this. Understand this. Like Bill Winston said this. This kept on resonating with me. 
Quit living in 3D and start work living in 4D. Yes. Because all the supernatural and all the blessings that are going to happen to you in your life that are supernatural, they're not in this dimension of what you can see. Amen. They're, they're not going to be moving. God's not going to be moving only according to your five senses. That's right. What you can see, what you can taste, what you can hear, what you can smell. Amen. What you can touch. Come on now. Jesus turned water into wine. About busting the grape. Do you believe it? Yes. Where the, the, what happened? Did the grapes just dive in the water? Once they started pouring the water into the jugs, the grapes all of a sudden just decided to come from nowhere and just jump in there. Come on. Amen. There's another level. Let's keep on going. So the next level you got to get to a diet change. And your perspective needs to change. Yes. See, we can't, we can't just, we, you just can't live in old time religion. We got too many stiff necked people. If Jesus used miracles to get people into the kingdom, if the apostles used the miraculous to get people saved, what do y'all think is going to happen to get this next batch in? That's right. <laughs> Amen. When the church started, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They started speaking in tongues. Amen. Yes. They were laying hands on folk, folk getting filled with the Holy Ghost and people getting healed. And the church was added to. Now the only thing we think we can do to build a church is build a nice building, have some good music, and wear cool clothes and let you come as you are. Amen. But if I'm not giving you anything that gives you the ability to stand, that you can live a life in victory, because the devil's waiting for you out there. Amen? There's so much more to this. Now, for those of you who are young, married people with families, you really better get fired up about some Jesus. And if you are a grandparent, an aunt or an uncle, whatever it is, it's time for us to start to fight too as well. They can't take this away from us. Because this is the power that the devil does not like. That's right. Amen? Keep on going. The only way to test the truth is to obey. Amen. The only way to test the truth is to obey. Yeah. So that's the reason why God always gives you things. You'll be like, what? And whoa. Amen? And he always throws you back a little bit. I'm <laughs> We need to do what he tells us to do. Yes. Could you imagine? Could you imagine being at that party? We're not going to turn there. And they ran out of wine and Jesus said, and Jesus' mama said, whatever he does you to do, you go ahead and do. And they did it. Go fill the water pots up with water and serve it. How many of y'all like to be the bartender that day? <laughs> because 3D is telling you this. I ain't seen any of that. Oh, one thing we put in that jug was water. I don't see no grapes. I ain't smell no grapes. No, I, I, I seen a Lucy where they're stepping on the grapes. Oh, some of y'all are too young. They still show it. I love Lucy. I didn't see any grapes. And, and hey, could you imagine being one of the servants? Doesn't that stuff have to take some time to ferment? Amen. Amen. But everything has to make sense to us in the church today. That's for free. See, the key to living a life of faith is not just living in limited life of three of the three dimensional life. Amen. Think about this. Everything else in our life gets an upgrade. We went from plasma TVs to, what was the next one? LCD. And then from LCD, what, what's the, what, what do we got now? The LED TVs. And now the next one is what? Um, smart, four, smart TV, 4K. The TV does everything. The TV will tell you, your dinner's done. Your refrigerator will tell you, we're out of milk. But your Christianity stays at this level. 
Everything else in life is upgraded, but your walk with God. Everything else is upgraded, but what your expectation of God. Come on now. Amen. Amen. When, when you're playing on a football field, they got, they got GPS put into your shoulder pads that will tell you how fast you're running. Yep. They caught that guy who scored five touchdowns against Alabama. He's doing 24 mile an hour in full pads. That's smoking, son. Full pads, 24 mile an hour. He ran faster than Tyreek, Jalen Hylett. All right, so I keep on going. But remember, God wants to move outside of your five senses. Your five senses are what? Your hearing, your taste, your touch, your smell, and your sight. Yep. We got to get outside of that yeah, because God's going to do so much more once we start to believe that we're just not living in this three-dimensional world. There's a four dimension, there's, there's four dimensions, the spirit realm that we need to get more attached to. Amen. Yeah. We have, to, we have to understand that the full spectrum of reality is not in 3D. What you see in right now is not the full spectrum of reality. Right. Amen? Because you know what? Satan manipulates your 3D. He can manipulate what you see. He can manipulate the things on this earth. Because remember, the Bible that we read does say that he is the God of this world. But the one world that he is not in control of is the spirit realm. Amen. And that's 4D. Yeah. And when we start to understand that we are spirits that have souls that live in a body, we'll start, we'll start spending less time in these bodies and start spending more time in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have, let me have 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23 in the New King James. I may not be with you too long today. Behave. Timmy, you see Timmy back there smiling too. Now, Timmy usually be chill. Man, oh, he's back there laughing at me. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5, verse 23. Is it up here yet? New King James, please. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole Spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. You are a three-part being. Amen? And the more you start to understand that, because God is a spirit, he will talk to you to your spirit. Amen? Keep on going here. And God will give you answers in the spirit. Amen. See, God, see, I remember how the spirit of God talks to you when, when Angie, when I, when, oh, I was really comfortable living in my condo. I had a nice little house payment to where I could be driving my Porsche Panamera right now comfortably tooling through the town. And my wife said these words to me. We need to move out this house. And, and in my natural mind, I said, your mama, <laughs> respectfully, I didn't, those words didn't come out of my mouth. And then my wife broke it down. She said, we got grandkids and there's no room in this condo. <laughs> then I broke it down. If you can find a house that has everything that I want, yeah. I want the house to be up on a hill. I want the house to have one floor. I want it to be a ranch. But I want it to stand up off the road. I want to have a big front yard so the kids can play in it. And if you can find that house in Champaign County, holler at your boy. About three or four hours later. My, my, wife was, my wife was at her beauty salon at that time, and she's doing so much hair and so much talking. Well, my son's about to put his house up for sale. And then my wife says, you need to go look at this house. And I said, what? <laughs> and I drove, by, I drove by the house. I looked at the house, and there it is. 
it, 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 it's a it's a you know grand style house, but it's got a big basement in it now. You know, and that's the best of and and so the ceilings are what 15 feet tall in some places. The house, it's a whew. and 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 I said, you, and I drove around the corner. I said, you got to be kidding me, Lord. <laughs> so I walked into the house because now I'm still trying to get out of it. I'm still trying to get out of it. I'm not done yet. So I brought in a real estate expert. And I said, so how much you think I should pay for this house? Is this house worth this to you? And as I'm communicating to this man, the spirit of God speaks to me and said, why are you dallying your promised land? I said, conversation over. We'll buy the house. Why? Because the house has been strategically placed around the corner from where the ministry will continue to grow. And right now, we're having a project to redo the whole bottom part. The whole, we got a 1,900 square foot basement that we're going to, with a walk out to the backyard, that we're converting into a suite. So when ministers come in town, that's where they'll stay. So God, said, so God said this, I will take care of that. But you need to buy this first. And everything that you need for the house, I will provide. Amen. See, we're going to talk to the importance of being in the right place at the right time. Because when you're in a place where God picked you, God will give you every single thing that you need. Amen. Amen. And in this house, we replaced 34 windows. Some of them custom. Put a metal roof on this house. Put a driveway in the house. Wood floor in the house. We did two bathrooms. We did the kitchen. Are you hearing the same thing I'm hearing? Replace the HVAC. And then we have to furnish it because this house has rooms that the other one didn't have. But understand this God's faithful. And so when you get to understand the process of what he's trying to do, he wants to put you in a position. And if you keep on thinking 3D only, you will miss out on your provision because your flesh will keep you limited to what you see. Keep on going. We bought this church. I had nine people. Nine people. And the Lord said, buy the church. I said, okay, I'll go to the meeting. So I'm sitting in the office at the bank. And then they start talking to me. Are you incorporated? Are you all this other stuff? So I'm looking just like, hey, bro, in my head, I'm saying this. I just didn't get off the turnip truck. This church is incorporated. This church does have its federal ID number. This church does have all this thing. We do have an accountant that takes care of all this stuff. What are you talking to, player? That's what I'm saying in my mind while I'm smiling. And then the Holy Spirit says this to me. Ask them, is the mortgage assumable? And I said very calmly, is the foul mortgage assumable? <laughs> and he said, yes, it is. I was like, no money down. We're in here. That's how he bought this church. Amen. Amen? Mm-hmm. See, all you need to do is listen to God, not your flesh, because it doesn't make any sense. Then everything else began on the journey from the gravel parking lot that I cannot stand to the high tech that we had back in the kids room. I showed you guys last week to where we are now. And now I think I, I think I got a vision. And I talked to you about this, Angie, about about a building that I think would look good for what we want to do. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. So then God took me on what I would call 4D examples. So you got to understand there's a spirit realm out there. Okay? I personally have seen angels. A big, huge angel spoke to me. And trust me, they're not little itty bitty guys either. But then I start remembering things like this. As I'm driving down the road one day, I said this, the Holy Spirit speaks to me and he says this. He says, this lady, someone's got a headache. I said, OK, Lord, if, if, if you show me who the person is that has a headache, let me know. Then all of a sudden, bam, a picture flashes before my eyes. 
I walk into, this was back in the late 90s, I walk into a restaurant, I look at a server, I say, you got a headache. She's back there where Wally is. She goes, Brian, my head's been killing me. I said, come on back here to the back. I put my hands on her, I said, in the name of Jesus, behold. Then she's holding on to my clothes. Because I got the Vulcan neck pinch on her. No, I'm just kidding. Because she's falling out. And I said, just receive it. And I said, receive it. The power of God hit her. She had these big old thick glasses on. And you could see her eyes just moving. Then I picked her up. And she said, the headache's gone. I said, hallelujah. She said, but I don't believe like that. I'm Baptist. God doesn't care what religion you think you are. But see, God sees things in 4D. Amen. It's 4D. The healing of the heart attack that I, was, that I received in my house. I didn't have time to doubt 911. I had time to doubt Jesus. Amen. Amen. When my chest was hurting so bad, I got down on my knees and I said, Lord, I know what this is. I don't have time to go to the, to go to the hospital. There's no time for a squad. I'm 38 years old having a heart attack. Looking, you're that young, you have a heart attack, not good. Okay? And, the, and, and then I got down on my knees, and as I was praying, this black smoke came out of my body and shot through the corner of my household. And I said, Lord, what was that? He said, I cleaned all the plaque around every artery and vein around your heart. That's 4D. That's not 3D. 4D means it's a surgery without me even being cut. Amen. Amen. Come on, go. Keep on going. I was rescued from the Atlantic Ocean. What was it? One or two 70 something year old women. One. One. I'm in the Atlantic Ocean. I can't, I said ocean, not the Urbana, Champaign County swimming pool. I'm on the Atlantic Ocean. And I get caught in the undertow. And as I'm, I'm, I'm waving at Angie, she's taking nice little pictures. <laughs> then next thing you know, I go down and I go out. And, and in the pit, there's no one around. And then some 70-some, 80-year-old woman ran out there and, bricks and saved me. Now, I don't know about y'all. It wasn't, no, no one had the little red thing around, Baywatch. Yeah. <laughs> but she pulled me out of the water. And then after she pulled me out of the water, she's gone. That's 4D. Don't you think that if, if my wife saw somebody save her husband, she'd want to know who that person is? Yeah, exactly. But the lady was gone because somebody was praying in 4D. Boy, I got, I'm getting pressed in the middle of the night. It might have been somebody someplace over there in China. Ding dong, ding ding, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding Then they get the interpretation, Lord, help this Negro, because he had no business being out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, Amen. knowing he can't swim. May, may angelic hosts go out there and save him, because he's called to God. Yes. <laughs> but she's gone. <laughs> my, bro my, 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 my brother, my brother, you remember I was running across that street, and that car almost hit me, and all of a sudden you said it looked like what? looked like someone pushed, pushed me in the back? <laughs> and I'm probably five to seven years old somewhere around there and they seen it looked like I was running then all of a sudden something came from behind me and pushed me yeah, yeah just pushed me in the back and the, car, and the car missed me it wasn't by a whole lot 4D 4D you're a soldier, you might find yourself on a deployment, something else happens, something else will be like, how the world did you miss that? 4D. There's a spirit realm out there. When you're driving, on, when you're driving in your car and all of a sudden you start sliding, all of a sudden you'll be like, oh, my, my car just correct itself. 4D! Right. Right. You can't look at your wife and say, I got mad driving skills. <laughs> She's like, then why is that puddle of water on your seat? <laughs> Going up. You guys okay with this? Yes. Amen. 
remember, because I want to get you, I want to get you to understand, because this is because this, this is how this, 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 this is how this works. This is how this works in the name of Jesus. Come here, Nathan. Come here. Just come right down the middle aisle. In the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you. Okay. Hallelujah. Had a prayer cloth. I might as well go ahead and so his mama had a prayer cloth for him, but I'll go ahead and give him what the Lord got personally. Amen. 40. Let's have Matthew 5, verse 30. Matthew, Ma Matthew 15, verse 30 in the New King James. You guys okay today? I know I may be stretching your faith. I may be stretching you. But I got news for you. We all have angels. It's about time we start putting them to work. Amen. Okay. Then great multitudes came to him, him being Jesus, having with them the lame, the blind, the mute, the maimed, and many others, and they laid them down at Jesus' feet. And Jesus did what? He healed them. Okay. So that's the lame, the blind, the mute, and the maimed, and others. They laid them up and he healed them. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed made whole, and the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. So something stuck out to me, and I could not get off of this. In the King James Dictionary, maimed means crippled or deprived of some member. So you're crippled or you're deprived of some member, some part of your body. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, it means a condition of being mutilated or rendered imperfect as a result of an accident. Okay, now, when you think about this, it said the maimed were made whole. Where did the body parts come from? It said they're made whole. It didn't say they got a better, they, they got a new set of crutches, y'all. That's right. See, you read your Bible, you didn't read your Bible. Amen. From the fourth dimension. Amen. Something happened. Somebody, somebody, did, somebody didn't have a leg or something was wrong, and all of a sudden, bam, it was restored. I'm just reading the Bible. I know somebody might look at me and be like, he, what? It said the main made whole. See that? They saw the multitude marvel when they saw the mute speaking, the main made whole. Now, Jesus said, we will do the same works that he did. And greater works than these we shall do as he goes to the father. So now get your American thinking out of this and start thinking kingdom. We're part of a spirit realm. Amen. That's the those, those when those main people got made whole, something happened. See, remember, she said the main. I'm gonna read it again. Y'all see the same thing I'm saying? The maimed made whole. The lame walked. So it's not like they was crippled or something. I mean, somebody got some replacement parts. Amen. Amen. All right, keep on going, Pastor. Keep on going. Now, Jesus called his disciples to himself because Jesus is always doing this, people. It's just like the first time my wife met me, she's like, oh, he is so fine. <laughs> Didn't I blow your mind this time? Didn't I? Ask this other way around. I was a younger guy, hey, Clark. What's up? Jesus Now Jesus kept on blowing these blowing their minds. Now Jesus called him called his disciples to himself. And he said, have compassion on the multitude because they have continued with me for three days and have nothing to eat. 
And I don't want to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. Then the disciples said to him, where could we get enough bread in the wilderness to fill such a multitude? Now, the disciples are thinking what? 3D. Jesus is operating in 4D. OK. And Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? They said seven and a few little fish. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground and he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks, broke them and gave them to his disciples and the disciples gave to the multitude. So they ate. So all they all ate and were filled and they took up seven large baskets full of fragments that were left. And they all ate till they were what? Now, I'm going to come out here and look at you in the face. Because I know how some of y'all eat. Okay, I'm going to just ask the question. If the food is free and it's good, what you going to do? You're going to eat, you're going to eat like crazy. Now, now think about this. Okay, now think about now, now I'm going to add something to it. Add another caveat to this. If the food that you're eating was blessed by God, came out of the oven of heaven. What's that bread and fish tasting like? You, you, you're not saying to yourself, it's all right. All right. No, you're sitting there, you're eating that fish like you would not believe. And that's the reason why I have to keep on sending more down. But that's 4D. That's the spirit realm. That's not of the earthly realm. Got to get an amen. amen. Come on now. Look here. I grew up in a house, youngest of six. Mama would stretch food. Yeah. See, some of these young people who they, they, they not, might not cook as much as some of the older folks did back in the day, but they were stretch. See, you, you know where food like foods like goulash came from? That's stretching. Yeah. What we have left over, we had last night's macaroni. I got a can of tomato paste or something in here. I throw some onion in that. Got, got, a little bit of, got a little bit of ground beef and man, what else you got? We got some old sausage or something in there. We put that in there too. Where y'all think stew came from? Just a little bit of this, little bit of that. We got this much of the, of, of the cow left over. We can't throw that away. Amen. My folk are from the south. Where do you think rice pudding and bread pudding came from? You made some rolls. You're like, I ain't. Can we throw this bread out? You ain't throwing that bread out. Amen. Amen. You learn how to stretch things. But the spirit realm, there's no stretching. It's just coming fresh from heaven. Amen. Now, talk about this for a second. Faith operates in 4D. And faith is the currency spent. In 4D, in a fourth dimension. Faith is the language spoken in 4D. Because in the fourth dimension, in the spirit realm, it does not hear doubt. Amen. Does not hear doubt. Does not hear doubt. So a lot of us are wanting God to respond to our situations in 4D, but you're speaking the wrong language. Right. Amen. Come on now. You're, you, you're saying something. If you're begging him to do something, that's not 4D. Amen? Amen. If you talk, if you don't have faith in it, that's not 4D. You're still living in the spirit realm. You're still living in your natural realm down here. Okay. Now I remember one thing. So 4D is spoken. It doesn't understand the language of doubt, and it does not understand the word impossible. It knows that all things are possible. I remember one time I got fired, and it's one of the worst things when you got fired and your wife comes home early and realizes that your company car is not in the driveway anymore. And you're waving at her. And I was, so I was fired. And I just got saved. Just got saved. 1991. Just got saved. I got saved somewhere around there. Late 1990, 1991. Early 1991. And so I was fired in that October, somewhere it's around in there, 91. I like to compartmentalize bad experiences. 
But anyway, we didn't have a car. We didn't have a car. So we went out and bought a 1984 Chevrolet Chevette. They should have called that thing a shove it. <laughs> the motor monster, I think they pulled the motor out of a lawnmower and dropped it in a car. So we had this 1984 Chevy Chevette. I took it down to Earl Scheib and got a $49.99 or $69.99 paint job on it. So they put some fingernail parts and sent it back to me. That car was a piece of trash. But it's what we had. Because I've got what you, you might have some other kind of car. So now I'm a new believer. And I'm, and I'm, feeling, I'm, I'm really trying to get into this thing called faith. So what I did was I lay prostrate over the hood of the Chevy Chevette and believed God for a new car. Amen. Now, I don't know about y'all. Do any of y'all keep your cars in the house? No. So what do you think my neighbors thought seeing somebody laying on top of the hood of a car? Yeah. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> we need to start looking for another place to live. <laughs> He's crazy. Remember, operating in 4D may not make sense to some people. But I thought I laid, I thought I laid across that car. I got to receive, we received a phone call. It said th th these words happened. You guys want a car? Sure. Just come over to my house and fill out the paperwork. You guys can have it. Amen. Has that ever happened to anybody in here? I'll take that one. We didn't go looking for a car. The banker called us and told us to come to his house and get the car. Now, the only person who had a job at this time was my wife, and she was making four dollars an hour plus tips. We went from a 1984 Chevy Chevette to a 1991. This was back in 1991 Chevy Camaro with T-tops. And did not have to go to a car lot to get it. Amen. 4D. Amen. Amen. 4D. See, God does things for you. And then he comes back because my wife once had a car that had T-tops in it. And that's what she wanted. Amen. It's neat. All right. So I just start thinking about a thing. 4D. We remember, we're thinking 4D. 4D. Let's have Genesis chapter 22, verse 13, please. You guys okay with this? So I want to get you to start to believe at another, at a higher level than where you are. Because at the end of the day, it's like this. This church builds a new building. It, it might cost anywhere from five to six million dollars. And it's going to be done by faith. Now, if someone sit there and say that in a town like this. Well, why don't, we, why don't we get one of them steel buildings that look like a gym and church it up, Pastor? That's not what God's saying. That's not what God's saying. See, we all, as Christians, we want to get everything on the cheap. But what are the roads in heaven? I guess God's broke. He's building you what kind of house? What? No, 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 no. And, and what are the gates made out of? So we got a problem asking him for a new building. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And he's your father. And since I'm behaving good, well, don't ask my wife that. And Abraham, so, so okay, Abraham's supposed to take his son up, 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 up the mountain. And, and sacrifice him. Amen. Amen. But and then Abraham and, and. Go back to verse 12. You got to see this. And Abraham's about to plunge the knife. OK, in Isaac. And he said, don't lay your hand on the lad or, or do anything to him. 
For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Leave that there. Where did the ram come from? Now, think about this. I'm quite sure somewhere along the journey, they've been like, why is that ram following us? No, the ram just popped up in the thicket. See, I used to think that the ram was just walking up the side of the mountain with them. No, he lifted up his eyes and bam, that ram was in there. It was just created just like that. So I asked myself another question about this one. This is another one. Didn't I blow your mind this time? Didn't I? Matthew 17, 24. See, I know I hit the high notes. I want y'all falling out. Y'all be playing, y'all be find out what minute this is on the CD and be listening to it again. Boy, he can blow. <laughs> Sam, I'm not available for any of that stuff. <laughs> when they had come to Capernaum, those who received the temple tax came to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, Yes. And when he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes from their sons or from strangers? Peter said from strangers. Then Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, take the fish that comes up when? So, so this, is how, this is how you pay your taxes. Go fishing. See, this Bible is written to blow your mind. That's right. But if we keep on using the Bible and not treat it like it's anointed, you'll never get yourself out in the spirit realm Do you believe that God can meet your need any kind of way in the world. And when you open its mouth, you find a piece of what? So in other words, where did that fish come from? They're just walking around with some money. The first one you happen to pull out the water? The first one, he said, he called it the first one you pull out. He didn't even say the fifth one. He said the first one you pull out. This fish is walking around here carrying some gold in his mouth his whole life just for you. And we have a problem. This is where it comes from this. Jesus takes care of the birds of the field. He takes care of the lilies. And we worry about how God going to take care of our needs. And he's sending them out to go fishing. And the first one that come out has a piece of gold or silver in it. Amen. And you'll find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Amen. So I'm saying these things is because the only way to test the truth is to obey. So now let's go to Luke 17, Luke 17, verse, verse 11. You guys OK? Yes. I want to get you to this place. Where we're talking about the 10 lepers. Then we'll get out of here. I have to believe God for the supernatural. I have to because, you know what, where I want to go, it's, it's funny when people say, Pastor, you should be full time. I used to say these words. You know how much money you put in the offering plate. <laughs> Can we keep it real? <laughs> you know how much money you put in the offering plate. My mortgage is twenty two hundred dollars a month. Any volunteers? So that means this, that I have to function in 4D yeah. to get out where I am. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Now, I didn't, I didn't mean that like it's bad. What y'all do? Y'all do whatever y'all want to do. I, I'm functioning in the kingdom of God. Yeah, amen. Right. So but when people say hey, I have bills and I got to eat and everything else. Amen? amen. Got a dog that my wife loves. <laughs> I love the dog, too. <laughs> I'm not getting in trouble over that. OK. <laughs> Talking about healing. Remember, the only way to test the truth is to obey. See, I want them, I want the miraculous power of God to function in my life. How many of y'all want miracles? Amen. I need a miracle. I don't need to live a life of just things just being normal because I want my testimony to be so strong that someone who's not saved will sit there and say, 
I'm getting saved. Amen. 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 Now, all right. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then he entered into a certain village. There he met 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off and they lifted their voices to Jesus. They said, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus said, were there not were there not ten? Where are the other nine? Where were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. So let's go back to verse 11, please. We'll break this down for a second. Because we, verse 11, because we live in a world where there's so much dysfunction and everything else. And misery loves company. So you got a whole bunch of lepers just hanging around together because they have to hang around the colony. And you'll find out that if you want to, if you find out that depressed people like to hang around other depressed people. People that are struggling like to hang around other people that are struggling. If you want to change your situation, you need to get yourself some new friends. That's right. Amen. You get yourself some new friends. See, you got to you have to come out of your situation and see and see a different re, different perspective. But but understand this. You don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. You don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. And you under, so I remember this kind of stuff. People say this. And a lot of girls would say this or guys say, I only attract a certain kind of woman. Well, why is that? Let's look at who you are. Or the girl would say this. Why is all the guys I meet like this? You understand this. You have to let the spirit of God remake you into who you need to be. Amen. I, I will be by myself than be around people that don't have a big vision. That's the one thing I love about the about the group that we're around now in ministry is that they will make you look at things from a different perspective. They will force you to do things a different way. Amen. God, God Jesus did not lay down his life for you to be average. Amen. Amen. Did not lay down his life for you to be average. But now but understand this. Because because this is why people, birds of a feather flock together, because there are people you can be broken and weak, but you still desire to feel normal. Amen. In the world we live now, that's why everybody just loves their normal stuff. I feel like I'm a cat. Oh, you're not the only one. <laughs> this Facebook page is on all this nonsense. So now, wait a minute, I'm not by myself. I can be a part of the kitty group. I can be a part of the doggy group. Wait a minute. I'm not the only I'm not the only parent who has a dog that has a kid who wants to poop in or whatever. <laughs> then they start thinking that it's normal, but it's not because dysfunction now because of technology. People say I'm not the only one. But understand this, people of God. God made you a certain way. You're created in the image and likeness of God. Yes. OK, you're not someplace using the litter box. Can I get an amen? Keep on going. But one thing you find out from these scriptures is that Jesus is for outsiders. Jesus is for outsiders. He is for people on the outside. Because the Bible, the word of God says this, they stood afar off. Some people want to disconnect themselves from the church. You can't run from Jesus. Right. Amen. Keep on going. Verse 13. Verse 13, please. Verse 13. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. They cried out to the only one who has the answer to their problem. They obviously heard about Jesus. See, this is why we need to believe for the miraculous so we can testify. If you just keep if you just keep your prayers and just Lord, just get me enough. Lord, I just want to just barely get by. Remember, the streets are made of gold. Your father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Think about what you asked for God as a child growing up. Why are we limiting God now? 
Now's not the time. Now's the time for us to ask even bigger than we ever have and then ask him, what do we need to do to get that? Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Keep on going. That's what we need to testify. They called him master. You know what they called him master? That means they are willing to do whatever he told them to do. And I'm sitting in my office. I said, Lord, how can I explain that to him? They, they're willing to do whatever he says. So I thought about this. Cobra Kai, sweep the leg. What's this say? Sweep the leg. You got a problem with that? They called him master. They're willing to do whatever he told them to do. Remember this. We cry out to him. He hears. Um, he speaks. We cry out. He speaks. We hear. We obey. Do you know what comes next? The wow factor. If you get on FTC, I spent five sermons teaching on this. But I know a lot of people like to do that kind of stuff. You cry out. He speaks. You hear. You obey. The wow factor. Okay, that's a, that, that, I preached that probably two years ago, I think. Okay, keep on going. But you can get on FTC Urbana, YouTube, hear it all over again. Okay. They ask for mercy. They ask for mercy. Why do they ask for mercy? Because they ask to him to give them something they don't deserve. That's right. Amen. Because some of our wounds are self-inflicted. Yeah. Yeah. They be like, God, help me. But he don't come back at you like, you know, I ain't tell you to do that. <laughs> he just going to help you because he's merciful. Amen. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, I know. I tell you what, I may, I'm, I'm not preaching on that. Leave that alone. Verse 14. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was as they went, they were cleansed. Leave that there. Yeah. See, when God tells you to do something, it's not always something that's that difficult. Right. Yeah. All they had to do was go. Yeah. All they had to do was start moving. Amen. Amen. See, God doesn't give you something that's so that's, that's so complicated and that you cannot do. If he tells you to do something, he has equipped you with the ability to do it. He told Naaman to dip himself down seven times in the Jordan and it will take care of his leprosy. And Naaman got an attitude with that. Why am I taking it? Why am I dipping in that dirty water? Then the servant said, Master, this is, this is my paraphrase. Are you crazy? He ain't tell you to do nothing that's that difficult. Just go over there and dip. You want to be healed or what? God could be telling you, do you want to be healed of the joint pain you have in your body? Quit drinking coffee. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. And you'll be like this. <laughs> but do you want any, Lord, do you want anybody to be around me before I get my first cup? <laughs> if I don't get it? <clears throat> see, a lot of times, see, we're talking about healing. Sometimes the answers that we need. To, for our bodies to be healed is to give up something that you really like. Yeah. Ooh, that's so good. Look, I love ice cream. I don't eat ice cream. Because it's not good for my body. I could tear some ice cream up, son. Amen. You go get me a half gallon. I'll just throw it down like, hey, where's y'all's at? <laughs> and don't give me no fake stuff. People be eating this, eat all this creative stuff that tastes like trash. No, I want to eat some good ice cream. That's right. But I don't eat ice cream because all that sugar is not good for my body. That's a choice that I have to make. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be whole? Or do you want to satisfy your flesh? The choice is yours. Amen. Keep on going. He tells Moses just to lift up a rod and stretch out his hand to split the Red Sea. Lift your rod up, stretch out your hand, and watch it split. Lift the rod. Well, anybody can do that. 4D. It's not nothing too hard. A lot of times we have all these big problems. I don't know what to do. 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 First thing, quit saying that. That's the reason why you don't know what to do. You say, Lord. 
What can I do? To, what do I need to do to be able to solve this problem? Amen. Speak to me, Father. Amen. Amen. Keep on going. And he's telling them, get moving. A lot of us, we need to get moving. Yeah, that's right. And he's telling them to get moving. And he's saying this, by the time you get there, it will be there. Amen. So he's telling them this, by the time you get to the priest, you're going to be healed. So, so the Lord can be speaking to me. You need to start working on what that building looks like because by the time you get there, guess what else is going to be there? The provision is going to be there. It, look here. Come on. Come, come on, man. Boy, I'll tell y'all what, boy. Y'all got to get this. Because in order for you to see it, you got to start moving towards it. You can't wait till you have it to believe it because that's not 4D. But if I'm starting to look at places and say, that's what I want, how much that is, how, how much land do I need to build that, then I'm on my way there. Amen. And when I get there, the provision will be there. Amen. Okay, look, Elijah, go to the brook Cherith, and as you wait there, the, the ravens will feed you bread and meat and you drink water from the brook. So God sent ravenous birds to feed his servant. Right. He's sitting down there waiting on Jimmy John's. <laughs> Uber Eats. Elijah, what you doing? I'm waiting on him. I'm calling him. Ah! Ah! Oh, here they come. A bird that eats me is giving me meat. <laughs> come on, y'all. See, God does that. He didn't say he sent a bird out that was a vegetarian. He sent out a bird. That'd be like a turkey vulture bringing you some. Oh, you want on me coming up turkey vulture. <laughs> He's telling them to get moving. He just said, go show yourself to the priest. All he had to do was take the first step. Then as they take the first step. You put one foot in front of the other and soon you. Oh, OK, some people are too young to get that one. You got to start moving. So now look, check this out. When you're heading in the right direction, your manifestation will begin to occur. So think about this. As you start moving in that direction, you're setting off this chain. Oh, shh. Oh, y'all need to get this. When you start moving in that same direction. See, a lot of you waiting for things to manifest. They don't manifest that you standing still going, when is it going to happen? You got to move. You got to get moving. See, this is not just for your healing. This is for your life. And the Holy Ghost is speaking to me right now. He's like, start stepping towards it. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Yes. Oh, I'll tell you what, boy, if y'all know Sly Stone, if I had an afro, it'd be just like his. Yeah. <laughs> mm, Michael Jackson's 70s afro. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. Keep on. Be cool, Brian. Be cool. Be cool. Do what God is telling you, and there will be a breakthrough. So as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they kept on looking at themselves. As they went, they kept on seeing change. As you go to what God has for you, if you're believing God for a new home, start looking for one. Don't believe what well, interest rates are this and this is that and all this. Quit that nonsense. We're talking 40. You got to start walking towards it and start looking. Because look here, look here. Do you think God care about interest rates? Look here. You go to that place where God put you at. Someone's going to give you a discount that make the difference of that interest rate. And the other thing is this. God will put so much money into your hand that you don't got to worry about interest rate. Because you know what? If you get enough for these, you might be able to think cash. See, we don't we don't think that way, though. We think about easy monthly installments. Look, here, I got news for you. I've never paid anything to the term of the contract. I've always paid everything off early. That's 
Always. Never a house, not a car or anything, because I have an expectation that God's going to meet my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I know that I have sold the seed. So I, I, so I, I give this been given to me, pressed down, sitting given to run it over. So man put into my bosom. See, I'm operating in 4D. I'm not expecting my job is not my source. He's my source. Amen. Glory to God. OK. All right. So as they went, verse 15, verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorified God. Leave that there. I'm not talking about the other nine. A lot of people spend more time talking about the nine. I'm talking about the one. Because see, you the one. You the one. You the one that's going to go back and testify. You the one that's going to go back with a loud voice. If someone starts talking about your Jesus, wait a minute, you talking about my God? Uh-uh. No. I tell you what, I was believing God for a house, and this is what he did. I was believing God for a job, and this is what he did. I believe in God to heal my body, and this is what he did. I believe in God. You know my son? Yeah, your son was cut. No, well, he ain't now. Glory to God. You're going to be that person that's going to be the one that will testify of God's goodness. And you know what that does? That brings hope in the, that brings hope to the hopeless. That stirs people up that they can start to understand this, that God is no respecter of persons and what he's done for others, he will do for you. And you will sit there and pull out that prayer of Jabez and watch your life change. Glory to God. I remember one thing. It all starts with a shout. It's not time to be cute and sophisticated. This is the one thing I found out is this. Even though in today's church we can wear blue jeans and T-shirts and everything else, but no one jumps or shouts. This is worship. This is worship to today's church. When I came up in the, when I came up in the 80s and the 90s, we looked like Steve Harvey. I had a, I, I had a, a caterpillar over my lip. I, you know what I mean? The big, thick mustache, had the pocket square, had the suit, everything matched. We're like, ah, running. And, and these folks are here in blue jeans and T-shirt. Ain't no one ever got to run on the name of Jesus. Look here, that has to come back because you're going to start to see a manifestation of God's goodness and you will not be able to stay in your seat because God, because you'll be, oh, hallelujah. See, it's not time to be cute and sophisticated. There's too many folks that try to sit back and be like, I might look strange. Are you kidding me? God just paid off my house. I'm going to run. God just healed my body. I'm going to run. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know what? I'm going to close with this. I got nothing else to say. But I remember, I remember an old song. I remember an old song. Oh, glory to God. Uh, uh, remember that? When I think about his goodness and what he's done for me. When I think about his goodness and how he set me free. I can dance, 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 dance all night. All night. I can dance, 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 dance all night. See, now, look here. See, see that, that, that's too simple. They'd be like, when I think about his goodness and how lovely he is to me, the sky just looks like the stars and everything just twinkles. I think about dancing in my spirit. And I add, you know what I mean? I add all, see, the songs were simple. I can dance, 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 dance. And then it had one. I can flat out run. I've been in meetings and boy, I tell you what, the next sanctuary that we build, we will, I will make sure that we got a speed lane in. Because I got news for you. What's going to happen, what's going to happen in this church? In the name of Jesus. Yeah, understand, in the name of Jesus, there'll be some ministers coming to this town. They'll be coming to this house. And the word that's going to come forth is going to make somebody run. Because you know what they're going to say? They're going to walk into this house. They're going to sit there and say, well, wait a second here. Who's your intercessory prayer group? Because I can feel, oh, set up, I don't shout. I can feel that the prayer is already baked in this place. I can feel that it's easy for the Spirit of God to run, to move in this place. Because there's a freedom, there's an expectation. Look here, look here, look here, look here, look here. There's too many stiff-necked people in the body of Christ right now. 
and God's about to, about to, he, he's about to, he's about to loosen that neck up by the spirit of God till we can start to see some things. And when he starts to move, we're going to get a revelation of him that we've never seen before in our whole lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you're blessed today. Amen. Whew. Whew. Boy, I'm sweating. Hallelujah. Too much dancing. Too much dancing. Love who prayed and said, well, you know, uh, you know like, they, like they say, when, when those black folks start sweating, we look greasy. <laughs> Everybody be like, he, well, I can't believe he said that. Believe it. Yeah. I've done TV before and they had to put yeah. that thing on you. you know, commercials and stuff like that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that's in your word. We thank you that this is our set time for your blessings to flow. We thank you that we're stepping in. Our Father, I just thank you for the grace to be able to move forward. And I thank you that every step that's taken, that there's a blessing that's attached to it. A season of manifestation that we're walking into. I thank you for that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.